In this video, I'm going to show you the difference and whether you should be eating grass-fed or grain-fed beef, or whether you can get all your daily protein requirements from plant-based protein. These are the exact same tips that I give to all my students, and they've all gone to see some amazing results. So you know it works. Before we get started, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video every week. It really helps support my channel. All right, let's get into it. Okay. Let's clear something up right away for starters. We actually don't eat for the quality of protein. Instead, we eat for the amino acids. In case you didn't know, there are 20 amino acids. Nine of them are essential. Essential means that our bodies can't make it or can't make enough of it for us to be healthy and happy human beings. So we have to get it from our diet. Now, I'm not going to name all 20 of them, but leucine, isoleucine, and valine specifically are limited in plants and other low-quality protein sources. Leucine specifically might be the most prominent amino acid because it's what triggers the all-important muscle protein synthesis through mTOR. mTOR, in case you didn't know, is short for mammalian target of rapamycin. And not all protein is created equal. The highest quality sources and the most bioavailable form of protein comes from animal products. I'm talking about beef, lamb, bison, fish, fowl, eggs, and dairy. You basically want to eat what your muscle is made out of, which is very different from plants. But let's actually start with that because there's a big push for going plant-based these days. It's very trendy right now. And a lot of the woke vegan influencers say that you can get all your daily protein requirement from plants. And you know what? They're actually right. You can get all your essential amino acids from plants, but there's a catch. The amount of plants you need to eat in order to get enough protein to optimize body composition is metabolically devastating. And that often just gets swept under the fridge. Now, your daily protein requirement to optimize body composition is actually twofold. Credit goes to Dr. Gabriel Lyon for this, but you need to eat 30 to 50 grams of high quality protein per meal to trigger muscle protein synthesis. And then you want to eat at least 0.7 grams per pound of lean body mass in total every day to optimize body composition. The minimum number of 30 grams per meal is very easy to get if you're eating animals and animal products. It's 4 ounces of meat or 6 ounces of fish. It's a couple of eggs and 3 slices of bacon or a couple of ounces of cheese. I mean, who doesn't like a bacon, egg, and cheese omelet? Or it's one scoop of high quality whey protein powder. If you want to go plant-based, this is where it gets interesting. You would need to eat a mind-bending 6 cups of quinoa, which also contains all 9 essential amino acids, to get those 30 grams. And that's just for one meal or you would need to eat at least eight slices of Ezekiel bread to get those same 30 grams. If your daily protein requirement is 90 grams, for example, that's 24 slices of Ezekiel bread or 18 cups of quinoa, which is just metabolically devastating. It's catastrophic to your insulin levels eating that much carbs. And I have talked about the importance of moderating insulin ad nauseum on my channel. So if you're new, make sure to check out all my other videos. But my point is you don't want to have a massive insulin response from your meals. And it doesn't really matter that you're eating slow carbs. That's actually not a good thing. That means that your body has a hard time digesting it because of its anti-nutrient content. Again, not all protein is created equal. Any sane person should know that eating a piece of steak is not the same as eating kale or broccoli. It's just not. At the same time, plants, like I just mentioned, contain anti-nutrients which slows down the absorption of nutrients. It's kind of their innate defense mechanism against predators like us. I mean, they're not just sitting on the ground waiting to be eaten. And all the woke vegan influencers conveniently forget about this. I'm here to tell you that kale doesn't love you back. Another plant protein example is tofu. It also contains all nine essential amino acids, but at the same time, it also contains trypsin inhibitors. Trypsin, in case you didn't know, is an enzyme needed to properly digest protein. Do you kind of see the irony in that? It also contains phytates, another type of anti-nutrient, which reduces the absorption of important minerals like calcium, zinc, and iron. And your body kind of needs those minerals. You'd also need to eat at least two hard blocks of tofu, around 240 grams, to get those 30 grams of protein. That is a lot of tofu just to get the 30 gram minimum. At the same time, eating a steady amount of anti-nutrients from plants can lead to inflammation and gut issues, among other things, eventually triggering an autoimmune response. Meat, on the other hand, does not do any of those things. Again, these woke vegan influencers are absolutely right. You can get all your daily protein requirement from plants, but you would have to eat a stupid amount to get it. Now, what about plant-based protein powders? Yes, you can do a vegan protein shake. 
But again, you have to make sure that it also contains all those essential amino acids. When you look at the back label of hemp protein powder, for example, it'll say 30 grams per scoop. But again, because of the bioavailability and the amino acid profile, your body really only absorbs around 15 grams. It also tastes like butt and it's ridiculously expensive. Now, people often complain about the hormones in meat and animal-based products, but there's actually a million times more in a pea-based product in estrogen activity, especially phytoestrogen. Phytoestrogens, in case you didn't know, are substances that can produce estrogen-like effects in the body, but are not produced in the body. Some people also don't tolerate legumes, even pod-like legumes like peas. So for those people, pea protein can actually throw off their digestion and hormones. Basically, you really have to know what you're doing and have perfect supplementation if you want to go vegan. The problem is, people watch an unbelievably biased documentary like What the Health, Cowspiracy, and Game Changers, and they do a really good job of pulling your heartstrings. And people just take what they see in these documentaries as fact. For example, they make ridiculous statements like eating an egg is as bad as smoking a cigarette, or that cow farts causes global warming, or that ridiculous erection test from game changers. People don't know that none of the health claims in those documentaries are based on good science. They're just based on observational studies where people just answer questionnaires, which isn't real science, it's just tortured data. But if you actually bother to look at real science, there are are no randomized controlled clinical trials that shows that a plant-based diet is the healthy diet for humans. It's just not. It's also not better for the environment. None of those are true. Monocrop agriculture kills thousands of small animals. Hey, you can absolutely go vegan or vegetarian. If it's an emotional bias where you just don't want to eat animals, that's one thing. Good for you. That's actually commendable. But if for some reason you're doing it for health, not eating meat is one of the worst things you can do to the human body. And I post a lot about this if you follow me on Instagram. My handle is at the top right hand corner here. Because you see a lot of these well-meaning but unfortunately misinformed vegans kind of go through a disturbing reverse transformation. It inevitably happens after the honeymoon phase where they feel great to start. But this vegan decay happens because they inadvertently put themselves on a low protein diet. They get sarcopenic and it ages them at a very alarming rate. Oftentimes you hear them having gut issues in tandem with hair loss, their teeth are falling out. They also have the smallest brains when autopsies are performed. Kind of morbid, but it's true. And vegans, time and time again, have been shown to have the least amount of muscle mass and bone density. So the end result is they made themselves weaker and lower their metabolism because they've reduced the tissue that burns the most calories. They've decreased the organ that's most effective at improving insulin sensitivity. Muscle is actually the largest organ in the body. It's an endocrine organ. It's also the largest site for glucose disposal. It's the key driver of our metabolism. It's basically our metabolic currency and it determines everything about our body composition. More importantly, it's a key indicator of lifespan. Muscle is the organ of longevity. The higher the muscle mass, the higher the protection against all-cause mortality. And this is so important for diseases of aging like type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, which is now being referred to as type 3 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. It actually all starts in the muscle first. Because the lower your skeletal mass, the higher your morbidity and mortality. As you get older, if you get sick, muscle is the most direct predictor whether you're going to survive. It's honestly as simple as that. This is why you need to correct metabolic composition first if you want to lose weight. By making sure you have healthy muscle tissue, the weight will come off and you stimulate muscle mass through high quality dietary protein and resistance training. Now, a lot of the big names in the health and fitness space are pushing for grass-fed and grass-finished beef instead of grain-fed beef. I'm a little torn about this part. So as always, I'm going to come at it from different levels because I don't think that cost should be a barrier to entry for optimal health. Grass-fed beef, unfortunately, is still very expensive at this point in time. When I first became aware of it and found it at my local grocery store, I was shocked by how expensive it was. I thought they made a mistake on the price sticker. Now, some people might not know about this, but the majority of conventionally raised beef actually spend around two thirds of their lives in pasture. A lot of people just assume that they spend their entire lives in cages. No. The majority of the cattle is actually raised in pasture. And then if it's your conventional beef, around a third of their life, they go to a feedlot to fatten them up or whatever. Don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating for feedlot operation. It really needs to change because regenerative agriculture is the way to go. But again, at this point in time, your number one priority when it comes to your health is to eat high quality protein. Again, the highest quality protein comes from animals and animal products. We've already established this. Listen, if you can afford grass-fed beef from sustainable regenerative sources, 
great. Keep doing that because the more people buy it, the more pressure it puts on the industry to do more of it, thus making it more affordable. But if you can't afford it, and this applies to a lot of people, there is absolutely nothing wrong with eating grain-fed beef because I'd rather people get high-quality protein than not. I ate grain-fed beef for the longest time. I still do sometimes. You also often hear people say that there's a higher amount of bad fats like omega-6 in conventionally raised beef and chicken, and they're right. But if we're looking at the big picture, it's honestly relatively insignificant compared to the alternative, which is highly processed food containing toxic vegetable oils. It's all relative. Beyond Burger, for example, has 18 ingredients that I can't even pronounce. A burger patty, whether it's grass-fed or grain-fed, only has one ingredient, beef. Which one do you think is healthier? Now, what about antibiotics? It's actually not in the muscle anymore by the time it reaches store shelves. And I'm usually the last person to defend the USDA. I mean, they're the ones that came up with the stupid food pyramid. But their guidelines for meat is actually very strict. It can't have any traceable amount of antibiotics or hormones. The good thing is there's now a growing movement of farmers that do great regenerative agriculture. And that's crucial. Regenerative beef agriculture is actually carbon negative because it rehabilitates the topsoil. As you can see, it's not the cow farts, people. But if we're strictly talking about improving the overall health of the average person, having a high quality nutrient dense source of protein is way more important than making sure it's organic or grass fed. Because what are the metabolic implications if you choose not to eat grain-fed beef and you decide to eat highly processed carbs instead? If you look 5 or 10 years down the road, the healthcare cost is going to be so much higher. There's a very alarming recent study that shows that 88% of American adults are metabolically unhealthy. The US spent $3.8 trillion in healthcare in 2019. I mean, I can't even wrap my head around that number. So you have to think big picture. It should be a no-brainer if the choice is between a bowl of cereal for breakfast or cheap grain-fed eggs. I don't want you to think when you're grocery shopping that you always have to pick grass-fed. It's just not sustainable at this point for a lot of people. Again, if you can afford it, great. If not, eating grain-fed meat still puts you way ahead of the curve. And just remember that investing in yourself, in your health, is absolutely worth it. The next question then becomes, how are you actually supposed to eat if you want to lose weight? Because here's the thing. 80% of your body composition is determined by your diet. You can't just freestyle this part. Do you have a proven plan that you can follow? To help you with that, I want to give you a free copy of my Lean Body Blueprint. This is how I was finally able to get rid of all my unwanted body fat without depriving myself of my favorite foods or spending countless hours at the gym. It's a simple four-step process specifically designed for busy professionals and it's the exact same blueprint that I teach to all my students and they've all gone to see some amazing results. If you want to be the next success story, then download your free copy of the lean body blueprint right now. There's going to be a link somewhere at the top here or in the description box. Just click on it, tap in your email, and I'll send it to you right away. Hey, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every week and feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions about this video. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Virtual high five.